today I'm gonna show you one of the best hammer on pull off exercises you could ever play. And that involves all four fingers. Yes, including that pinky. So hang tight, bear with me. I promise you, if you do this, you will get better. Hammer on pull off exercise, the ultimate, the ultimate hammer on pull off exercise. No, I won't go that far. But it is a really, 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 really good one. So the idea here is that we're not only just hammering on and pulling off, we're also landing on a neighboring string, on an adjacent string. So I started doing this last summer and it made my hammer-ons and pull-offs infinitely better. Like the timing of them, the phrasing of them, even the placement of them in my improvising got better. So we're gonna start with the easy one, which is our first and second finger. Starting on the B string on the fifth fret, you could do this anywhere, and if you want to get really involved with it, you should do it everywhere, but we're going to stay in the middle of the fretboard because I think it's the easiest place to play most things. So, first finger stays anchored on the fifth fret on the B string. Second finger does a hammer on as you pluck, hammer on and pull off. And then instead of just letting that exist on its own, you land on the same fret, the sixth fret, of the neighboring string. I should say neighboring strings because we're going to do both the G string and then go to the high E string. So, cool, that's, that's, that's the first one. Then we do the same thing, but we pluck, we use our third finger to go to the seventh fret on the G and the E strings. So we get and then we do our pinky. Oh yeah. And then we do our first finger. So all together, I'm gonna play it in time, I'll use a metronome in a second, but for now let's kind of go robato or whatever the word is for no metronome. to get them all to sound even. And then we go to the next string. So we start on the G string, same thing. Oh. And then we go to the D string. first finger and the third finger and then we go back up so we same concept of hammer on pull off pluck an adjacent string I tend to go with whatever finger I'm using first then I'll go to the pinky second finger first finger so now that we have that I'm gonna fat I'm gonna go a little quicker through the other one so you do all that, and then you end up back here, and then you use your first finger and your pinky. And the idea, that wasn't very good. But the idea here is that you get to use all four fingers. We're not done yet. But it gets, it's a control exercise. It's, it's how control its strength, its dexterity, it gets a lot at once. Getting these under your fingers, pun intended, will make you a better player. So we did the first finger. Now we go to the second finger. We do second and third. Then you end up down here, then you do second and fourth finger. This one's tough. And then you go back up, and then you do third and fourth. 
So there's a tab, if you sign up for my email list, I'll email you the whole tab because this exercise is really, really, really good. So I'm gonna play through it now in its entirety with a metronome, if you wanna play along. We're gonna see what the drum genius has for us today. So let's see what we got. We'll do funky, because we get Clyde Stubblefield uh, and we like playing along with Clyde. So we'll do Cold Sweat. This is at 96. I did 16th notes. If it's the 8th notes, it sounds like this. I wasn't, I wasn't playing much guitar, but this is a really, really good exercise. And if you're someone who's been struggling with hammer-ons and pull-offs, do this at a slow tempo. That was a 96, go even slower. Let's go at 60. And ultimately you want to be able to do them at whatever tempo you want. And we're going to go with the metronome just to make it easy. And you want them all to be as even as possible. So here's 60 beats. finger to your second finger is pretty consistent. First finger, third finger, pretty consistent. When you get to the fourth finger, especially on the B string because it's, it's, it's so thin, it's tougher to get that good sound.
go to like the D string, it's a little bit easier. But then once we get into the second and third fingers, like doing second finger to fourth finger, actually second to third first, that one's pretty good too. A lot of us are used to it. A lot of us are not used to though. So on second and third, not too bad. Second and fourth, meh. Again, the B string is really tough. We'll go to the D string. It's pretty good. That second finger does a lot of the work there. It's very, very stable. Third finger to fourth finger. When I first did this, I was like, what is happening? I thought I could play guitar. No. You can see the struggle. And it's not a very crisp hammer on pull off yet. It's, it's much more, it's much rounder. So I'll do the whole thing one time through. Um, Chameleon's a good one. So we'll go eight. So I'm gonna do the whole thing all the way through and we're gonna see what happens.
Third and fourth. No. Not yet. That's not that's not one of them right now. So this is a really I'm not gonna say intense, but it kind of gives a workout. Like my hand is tired now, no doubt about it. Whereas if I were to sit there and play, you know, I'm not tired doing that. But doing all those individual finger motions are very tiring. And as you heard, it's not the most musically sounding exercise, but that's okay. Sometimes you gotta take these practices that are not musical and work on them in isolation to then put them into your playing and you'll find something really cool in there. It's like if you've ever taken a voice lesson and done some of the stuff that you do in a voice lesson, you would never use that when you sing. But it's just a way to get the muscles working together and to help strengthen those muscles. So I hope that you found this to be helpful and that if you want the full exercise in the order that I would play it perfectly, which doesn't happen very often, but it, when it does, it's, it's cool. Just sign up for my email list, I'll bounce it over as soon as I see your name on there. And in the meantime, go practice this, go practice your triads, go practice your scales, but make it musical with using songs and stuff. This one you can't really do that with. I suppose you could. Um, if you're very specific in treating, you know, playing as a scale. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Where you could, I'm, I'm still here, so I'm just gonna do it quickly. You could do it, you could do it. I haven't figured out the exact way that I would do it yet, but that is an exercise waiting to happen. So I hope that you're doing well, and I hope that you have a wonderful day, night, week, month, year, whenever you're watching this. Just uh, keep doing what you're doing. Doing a great job. Thanks everyone. Cheers.